Blessings, everyone, and welcome to Afrobelly. My name is Linnea. I am a multidisciplinary artist, a singer-songwriter, author, musician, producer, yogini, energy reader, teacher, mystic, and wellness facilitator. And this is the sixth episode of my personal series, Life After Death. It is the sequel to my teacher's favourite son, The Truth About Ramon Kalai. Like the previous episode, there will be no visuals, as the serious nature of this episode eclipses any visual of value. Additionally, as an artist who spends days at a time ploughing through hundreds of hours of footage to put visuals together to reflect my unique narration... I have no desire to dramatise any event spoken of here. In part one, I spoke about the lifelong relationship I had with my drama teacher, Mrs. Juliet Kalai, who was the head of drama at Manchester High School in Jamaica for several decades. I detailed the extent of not only my relationship with her, but the relationships that existed between both of our families and how, when I was in my mid-twenties, a mother, an artist and a university student, I was sexually assaulted by her son, Ramon Kalai. This episode will also be different to the previous ones as it features a conversation I had with Mrs Kalai in June 2022, just a few weeks prior to releasing part one on July 3rd, 2022. I have muted a few parts of the conversation for privacy And I am using this conversation to continue a wider conversation about rape culture in Jamaica and how participants in rape culture are solely focused on their own selves, even when they are the ones who birthed the sexual offenders. The constant focus on the shame it might bring serves to further antagonize survivors of sexual assault and uphold the pattern. I received a lot of support in response to part one, which I am very thankful for. And I noticed that not one single person who had stepped up to defend Ramon Kalai in the previous weeks had a single thing to say. As expected, I received about three comments from trolls with no identity, but the people who went out of their way to contact or mistreat me in defiance are now completely mute. Shame on them. They are victims of the conditioning within Jamaican rape culture and that is indeed what their actions infer. A handful of people I attended high school with many years ago made this decision and these include Diane Chambers, O'Neill Williams, David Beadle, Jermaine Williams, Kay Boucher, Patricia Ritchie, who all in one way or another demonstrated their defense of a known serial sexual offender who has been committing sexual crimes for almost two decades. In this episode, I speak to Juliet as she emailed me to ask if we can talk to somehow create a resolution, something I guess she hoped would stop me from publishing my documentary. Clearly, it didn't. The analysis of this conversation will follow in the next episode, and I look forward to reading your amazing comments below as we dissect each layer of impurity to create positive changes within a broken, toxic, and often primitive culture. In this audio with Mrs. Juliette Kalai, we discuss key information regarding pre- and post-assault events, and it evinces my previous documentary while showcasing what Jamaican feminine toxicity looks like in action. If Juliette Kalai had attempted to speak with me after this conversation to show empathy for what she had learned, I wouldn't have shared it. But silence is still consent. And if you listen closely, the chronic self-absorption, the periodic sarcasm and the overacting at the end of the audio wrapped up in a complete unwillingness to show true empathy and honesty is evident. Note Juliet Kalai is sad 
about Ramon becoming an emblem of sexual assault, but she shows no empathy nor concern for the survivors of his assaults. On first glance, it would appear that this concern is genuine, but upon further analysis of this audio and the subsequent silence on her part, the guilt and betrayal of womanhood I mentioned in the previous episode is on stage for all to see in its full glory. Please listen intently and comment your thoughts and feelings about this conversation and what it signifies on a broader cultural level. I'm sending love and prayers to all survivors of sexual assault within Jamaican culture and the world at large, dead or alive. So then, I, I, I wanted to just speak to you about um, just maybe my part. It's hard to speak about like specifically things that happened at the time uh -huh. since I wasn't there. So I just want to initially just speak about myself so i'm saying that um like when when you just spoke to me and um it's kind of hard to tell you to put yourself in my place like i kind of felt you know really bad uh -huh. to say whatever you spoke about so in retrospect no i'm just apologizing to say maybe i could sometimes but sometimes people tell me that my face look blank when i'm really hurting people tell me that all the while your face when wasn't really fact, blank so, to be fair i'm so compassionate and so on so i'm saying that maybe in retrospect because i'm the mother and you are somebody because i have a lot of students and some of them come like nieces and nephews and some come like children uh -huh. to me and to me i had put you in the category as one of my child in terms of closeness me so too. it's like i was in this like between a rock and a hard stone uh -huh. and i tried my very 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 best to be unbiased but you Not weren't unbiased, Mr. Mommy, Lai. You weren't unbiased mommy, at all. I told mommy, you what happened. I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm no, can I just female. say this one thing? Can I just say this? Because this is about me. You weren't unbiased yes. at all. I told you what happened. Mm -hmm. You said to me that you would talk to Ramon about it. You spoke to mm -hmm. Ramon about it. And you came back and you told me that. Ramon denies it. And Ramon says something else. And that was the end of that. And, right. and at the time, yes. I wasn't your student. I was your student. And that's why this is very right. serious because I was your student at the time. I was a past student. And the truth is, right. I think I did you a big grace. I know I did you a grace to tell you. Right. Yes. Yes. But unfortunately, so, you know, that's... The, af yeah. Afterwards, no. I thought about it and I said... What more could I have done? You know, to myself, not to anybody. I was there saying, did I handle it properly? What more could I have done? And all along, I wanted to revisit to say, how are you feeling? But then I did not, I felt a little uncomfortable. Uh -huh. I did not want to unearth. I wasn't sure where to go. And I, like I was in the position, it's, it's like about trusting somebody. Mm -hmm. um, other persons and I was saying should I have gotten like a very unbiased person who they don't have nothing to do with Ramon they don't have anything to do with you but they are fair and sit down but that was afterwards mm -hmm. but somehow I felt that you know like sometimes somebody feel like some pain or something and <laughs> I'm sorry and they have not that I expect it to go away, but they have dealt with it or... No, why should I deal with the fact... So. Why should I deal with no, man. anybody no, no, raping anybody? Why should I deal with it? It doesn't matter how long has passed. Why should I, I deal know, with it? I know, I know. It's not I fair know, but because and it's not right. I know, Lenya. I understand that. I understand that. When I said dealing with it, sorry, you see, that's why I have to think and process the words that I use. I really don't mean that like something so bad could happen to somebody and they deal with it but because i got two different stories and i'm in the middle no but here's the thing this is a, this is a, no here's the thing miss kalai this is a story about rape mm -hmm. if a woman now miss ramon never came and mm -hmm. told you nothing before me ramon never said nothing to you i have never 
in your company or outside of your company, seen Ramon as anything but a junior to me. And I have also never expressed in thought or in words or in energy any kind of romantic interest in Ramon. The thought to me is actually slightly incestuous to the point of how I do hold you for real, real, real as a second mother. The thought of being intimate with someone who was in primary school when I started high school is incestuous. Men don't usually come forward and say that they've raped women, for one. So if a woman comes forward and says, this is actually what's happened, one would expect that the man would deny it. And this is the reason why I was so deeply hurt. What I experienced with you broke me on a psychological level, much less emotional, because I understood that your response, Miss Kalai, doesn't belong to you, it belongs to the culture. Your response is a typical yeah. response for our culture. Look at how close yeah. we were. Look at the fact that I had left Jamaica from 1996. And every single time I came back to Jamaica, I always came to see you to the point where I became a mother. And I trusted you enough to bring my only child. All the time, it was such a blessing to me. It was like a dream come true. My whole yes. life journey was to finish right, university and to come home. Bit, me, sure, go ahead. I was just, I was just saying that um, even now, mm-hmm. it's like, it's like I'm not equipped. Then it's like even now, I am not sure where I should have turned and what I should have I done. I think you should have believed me because be you honest. don't know me to be a liar and you don't know me to be a wicked person. And obviously, we, we were close enough for so many years that we had such a beautiful rapport. At that point, I would have known you over 13 years since I was 10 years old. You took me yeah. to another country as a child. I don't think when it right. comes to like rational, rationality, one, would it make sense for me to come and tell you that anyway? But two... For me to bring it up so many years later. This happened 14 years ago. Yeah. 14 years ago. Well, 2008. So I think the only thing I could ask at that time, which is what I'm trying to speak to women about now, when a woman yeah. comes to you and says she's been sexually violated, even if it's someone that's close to you, you have to give her the benefit of the doubt. I should have gone to the police and reported Ramon, and because of your response, it just broke me. I just never had nothing to say after that, to be honest. But I should have mm. reported Ramon. But the truth is, Miss Kalai... But I appreciated you coming to me. I re- appreciated you coming to me. But, but it was, um, it was of I'm no just... benefit to me, though. It was of no benefit. It was a slap in the face. That's when I realised that a lot of the way how I felt about you, well, it well, was an illusion. I didn't inter- <laughs> I didn't intend it to be a slap in the face. No, but it was because I came to you twice, you know, two times about it, you know, become one time. You heard me out. You were compassionate. You told me you're going to talk to Ramon about it. I come back the next time. You told me that Ramon told you, yes, something did happen, Mm -hmm. but it was all willing. I have never slept with anyone from Manchester High School in my life, full stop. To me, it's like a, it's like, um, um, Sleeping is like bestiality. I don't believe in them kind of things. You know, I come from a Rasta family. Yes. I, that you even believe that about me was psychologically damaging. No, 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 no. That's not what I believe. That's not. So what, what did you think I happened? I did not think that you. I did not go ahead and believe that. No, but that's what you told me when I said to you. That's what you told me. You know. Yeah, yeah that's what you so told what? me. I came and told so you what, what happened, I... and you came back and told me, sir. Raman said the story not quite go so. Yes, something did happen, mm-hmm. but it was all willing. And that's when I realized, no matter what our oh, culture stands but, for... Oh, mm. oh, but the willing part, Lenia, the mm-hmm. willi- because I'm not going to try to remember all of that detail, but the willing part, because that would be crazy and wicked if you tell you, say, you do that. But that's what you that said. That you do that. No, well, maybe it, it never... No, when he said... When, when I said that, he said it was willing. I, mean, I didn't mean that he was saying that... I thought no, that he was saying that something happened between you and him. I that made him think he meant say. No, that's not what happened. It was in my head. It's okay, because guess what? It's a good thing that you didn't believe me. Because you see, if you didn't believe me, I would never find out that Ramon is raping other women. So yes, we're talking about this. But what have you got to say about the fact that two weeks ago, 
I put it online. Yes. Ramon is a rapist, and several victims have come forward, and they all know you. They all know you very well, and many of them are your students. So when you said in the email, like, what would you like us to do? I don't really think that you're in a position to ask that. Sorry. Hi, yeah, I was trying to call back as well. Sorry, um, yes, uh-huh. I glanced at the number, but it didn't look good. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, okay, because um, I thought of it, yeah. a Jamaican number, so I didn't respond. Oh, no, my WhatsApp is Jamaican mm -hmm. number, yeah. Okay, got you. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, um, so, like, the initial thing, I wasn't sure how to follow up something like that mm -hmm. and i'm saying the only thing that i could probably have done as a mother in retrospect mm -hmm. is probably go to a psychologist or a counselor or something what about the police to me what about the police because that's where i should have gone because i, I was uh, no i'm not saying you you know Lenny, uh -huh. i'm not saying you i'm saying i appreciate the fact that you came to me uh -huh. But you're not taking responsibility, basically, for the fact that you ignored what I said. And you're talking about, you should have got a psychologist. And what about what my journey would have been no, dealing man, with that? I, mean, I know, I mean, I mean, like a, 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 like a, um, a counselor, a therapist, or somebody uh -huh. who is unbiased and so on, and probably let them eyeball Ramon with you. No, the police, uh, that's the police's the job. Room. No, but when a woman gets okay, raped in Jamaica, they're I supposed to go to the police. They're not supposed to go to a psychologist. I did you guys a favor. Okay. If I had ever told my I mom, that's what I'm saying. because I never told my mother, you know, I never told my mother to this day. To this but day. That's what I'm saying. I am saying the fact that you came to me, uh -huh. I am, no, but I'm saying would you don't know, let me just think about like to get help for the person and follow through with it and what happens sure when someone is raped is in Jamaica Miss Kalai, what happens? Mm -hmm. When someone is raped in Jamaica, it's a crime. This is the first thing. This is yes, a crime. It is. Yes, so it first is. before it even it reach is. like emotional support, the first thing I should have done, which I had the full right to do, which by the way, I still have the full right to do is to go to yes. the police. Yeah, I can still report my money now. I can yes, still go to the police that, station yeah. any day and report him. And I should have done that. And in the process of doing that now, I should have gone and looked for some psychological support. But I didn't do that. I, yes. I came to you because you were a safe space for me, even though you were his mother. That was why I told you as well, because you were his mother. But at the yes. time, I was so young, yes. I didn't realize how, how, how toxic our culture is and how it really works. So we know that a lot of women get raped in Jamaica. We all know that. But the, the rapists are faceless. Mm -hmm. So when someone comes forward and identifies, imagine a, an elder that she's known, a respected person in the community, and says, this is what happens to me. She's not, it's not about some um, neutral person to come in. It's a crime. That's the first thing. But because you didn't believe me, it wasn't even considered as such. Because even now it's like you're just catching up on things that have happened you i can see that you to now to today no. you don't know what's happened you don't know what's happened and i'm not going to say what's happened until i put my documentary out but before when i was working on this documentary i only had my own story mm -hmm. but now i have other women's stories and this is a major problem and it's not going away so when you ask me what can we do i don't know if you're in the position to ask me that i feel that the only p person that's in the position to navigate what can we do is the villain, the criminal, Ramon. I don't see how you could navigate on his behalf if when this happened, you weren't, you know, you weren't available to me. You basically took what he said, you ignored what I said, and you took what Ramon said as gospel and life has turned around to come back to show you that it wasn't true. No, I didn't take it out as gospel. But I you didn't, didn't believe me, Miss Kalai. Like I, I, no, I didn't think you were lying either. I just wanted to, I just think that had I 
like I said, gotten a third party, then I, because... Why? Why do you need a third party? No, listen, remember this, another thing, right? I am not Jamaican. Mm -hmm. I am British born. When I came to Manchester High School, I was a British student in Jamaica. And came to your establishment. I was living in England. I have no reason on God's green earth, unless I'm sick in my head and you don't know me to be that way. I'm a hothead, but I'm not a liar. And everyone knows that about me. So when I come out and I say something, it's serious because I don't go around telling lies on people. I'm a very straightforward, sometimes I'm too blunt. So what's going to happen with Ramon? What is he going to do? Is he going to turn himself into the police? Because this isn't, um, what we're doing online isn't a joke thing. It's going somewhere and it's not going to disappear. No, Lenny, I don't think it's a joke okay. because I'm petering away slowly, 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 slowly and just getting thin and thin and thin. It's like a long But well, I bet Ramon isn't getting thin, thin though. Family. I bet Ramon isn't getting thin. Yes, yes. I, I'm sorry to yes, hear you're having is. that experience, but this is what it's had to take for you to even address the fact. This, the, what you're com- You know how upset I was Lenny. when I got your email? I was so upset and this is the reason why. I read the email. I said, oh, my God, this is Miss Kalai. Really? This is why I was... Yes, no, listen yes, why. Listen yes, to yes, why. Please. No, please listen yes, to why. Cause you, listen, you, please, because you wanted yes. to speak to me. Yes. Yeah? And I have something to say, too. Okay. When I read your Sorry. email, I was hurt <laughs> because I read the tone of the email and it was very genuine. It was very kind. And it's the person that I know you to be. And it was so shocking reading it because I was like, Oh, but this is really Miss Kalai. And I felt like it was 14 years late. And that's why I was sad. Not because you sent it, but because whatever you said in this email now, I'm aware in my being, this is what I needed then. So I appreciate it, but I am aware, like, wow, 14 years ago, this is actually what I needed. If if I had received that, I don't think I would have taken the whole situation so badly. Hello. Sorry about Hello. that. I don't know if calling on the iPhone would be better because it seemed like the reception isn't great. I'm not used to the iPhone. I'm not used to it. I'm not so technologically savvy. I don't even use a computer or anything like that. Okay. That if I don't see here. Yeah, I was saying that um, because I know you to be so straightforward and so on, and a really impolite to put it, mm-hmm. I was saying, remember, so you hear two stories, and I understand what you're saying, Lenya, yeah, so you wouldn't come and say that. So it's like I was there thinking, say, um, like I was confused then, mm-hmm. and I was there saying, um, then maybe I shouldn't have assumed. Maybe I shouldn't have assumed that I just tell you what happened. Mm-hmm. I was there saying, I wonder if um I wonder if everything it is at I wonder if Lenya um process everything and because like it is still foggy, process everything and say maybe it was not as extreme as she said, but it's a painful tear. And I didn't want to bring it up either because we are saying, okay, because it's a straightforward, it up called me one side and said, Mrs. Kala, you never answered me, whatever. And then because everything seems so normal, not that everything says something like that, that would have gone away, you know. But I was there saying, it seemed as if it was not as gruesome as Lenya. Like you kind of yeah. realize, no, maybe, like your process as maybe, you know, like you process something afterwards. Like young people, they are having fun and whatever, having and fun. then you process it. And then I was there saying, um, maybe because everything seems so, everything just pointed to normalcy to me, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then years and years and years and years, and then when I hear nobody, you know, so when you say no, but even Sean Sterling. I don't know if you're still in contact mm-hmm. with Sean. I talked to him um, on and off. Because Everyone's me and Sean office. were so close and we stopped talking. And we oh, stopped talking because of Ramon. Oh. We stopped talking because of Ramon in about 
I don't know, 2014, 2015. But he didn't say anything to me, nobody. Never I'm sure he anything. didn't, but that's why we stopped talking, because I said to him, how can you be my friend? And you know that this has happened to me. Yeah. You come all the way to England and you were you so You told quick. him. I told him. This isn't a secret. Not only that, but, this but was he never... he never said anything to me. But that doesn't that mean he doesn't know, because he told me to clearly me. that he had to keep his loyalty to the family, and that's why I said, all right, come off. I'm a Facebook a long time. That happened between me and Sean. And the thing is, I started off as an artist, but I'm a healer now. I'm still an artist, but I'm a healer because I've been through so much. I've had to heal myself. And along the way, I've gained enough tools to share with others. You see, when this happened to me, Miss Kalai, I had already taken myself out of my mother's house and put myself in foster care when I was 15 years old, you know, because my brother raped one of your students from a yaide. Oh. Right? In 1996, my brother raped one of your students from Yaide who came to my house one evening. Yeah? I've already spoken about this last year and on the Yaide internet. And a student came to your house? And a Yaide student, after rehearsals one day, we were doing some oh. production. So we were up, up top hall, and after they came to, she came to my house, and she was going to sleep over to the next day because we had to come back early in the morning. It was probably like over a weekend, not a school day, right? So she came and she slept at my house. And when um, we were in the middle of the night, my brother came in. Anyway, I'm not going to go for it. Cut a long story short. He raped my friend from AI Day and he gave his friend permission to violate me. But a neighbor was there and could only rescue one person. And I got rescued and the girl from AI Day never get rescued. Right? And she, from that day there, me never see that girl there again. So you see, I'm going to go to England now. This is like a year after mm -hmm. this has happened. And my brother is beating me up and I'm saying, Mom, how come you know Kenton is a rapist and you're not even saying anything? And all the stuff is going on. I end up putting myself in the government and going through the government. I went through the government. I never left home. I went through the government and got my own place. So this has already happened in my family. When I came to Jamaica, I saw my brother's girlfriend ex-girlfriend, she's a good St. Paul, she tell me same set of one by trip on her. Yeah? Okay. And it's the same neighbor that rescued me that rescued her out of that battery. So at this point, I know of two women that my brother has violated. Now, you know I love my mom. You know I don't talk to my mom. I'm not talking to my mom because I'm a done with rapist defender. Me and Jamaica have to forge a whole separate life for ourselves because you see this part of the Jamaican culture we don't want it in our family. We reject it. I reject it. And that's why you see Ramon, he's coming in at the end. Ramon is not the first. It's just because when I came out last year on the internet and I said what I said about my brother, nobody in Mandavona too, too know my brother, so nobody never care. No, I'm come out and talk about Kalai. Everyone cares. Why? Why do you care? No one never cared. Even you never cared when this happened to me. I had to go back to England. No, because you remember, Miss Kalai, when I came to Jamaica, you know was even there. I'm a run comma, you know, remember, I'm a run comma Jamaica, you know? Yeah. And you see, when I come back to Jamaica, I come and experience the same dotty thing in the culture that I'm trying to run away from in my own family. That's exactly what's happened. And you see, Ramon, from now to the day he dies, this isn't going anywhere. We're all going to have to integrate this truth about who he is into our lives. But, um, oh, does it really have to go this way? What do you want us to do? What do you want your students who've been assaulted by Ramon Kalai? What do you want them to do? Do you want them to go to the police? No, then. Yeah. What do you want them to do then? If it was Sabrina, when, what would you want when, her to do? No, when, you, when, you, when you said you told me, mm -hmm. I did not think that you told me so that instead of you going to the police, I go... No, it wasn't that, but the fact that you never believed me, oh. you broke my heart, and I decided... You see, if Miss Kalai, that know me since I'm a 10-year-old, and beg my mother how much time for me to leave my house, come I there. You see, if Miss Kalai was see me for so much years, and see me as a mother, and you see, if she no believe me, what may I go at the police for? 
Furthermore, Jamaican police are as corrupt as any. They're the, one of the worst police forces in the world, and I'm very well travelled, mm -hmm. and I don't trust them. So if I came to you and you rejected me, I decided from that point, okay, it is what it is. I did consider getting Ramon killed, though. I want to be honest with you. This was torture for me on a psychological level. There's many times I sit down and, and consider getting Ramon chop up. Yeah, 300 pounds, $60,000. That's all it takes. And I prayed and I prayed and I prayed. And let me tell you something. Do you know how I found out? Who is this, you know? Known for years. That's why when we moved to Jamaica, we couldn't even come and see you. It's a disgrace. I have suffered because, because so much because Lenya, of this. Because, Lenya, I did not, over all of these years, I, I did not, in my head, me never know that all of this has happened psychologically with you. No, but you wouldn't because know because you never bring it when, up again. When, yes, because I... You even came to England, and I still greeted you yes, guys, and I should have never come and see you guys. Know. And actually, that's another time when you, you were lucky that I love you so much because Ramon could have dead then too. That's what I'm saying. You don't understand. You you always talk I about grace. You, and I, uh, you're the one who taught me about grace and you, know, you always talk about grace but me why you for see so i have extended the most grace in this uh -huh. situation i've suffered the most and i've extended the most grace hello 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 Daniel? hello yes you can hear me now yes i can hear so what do you want to come out of the situation, Miss Kalei? I don't know. It's just like, um, before, um, I was just saying to about the other persons. If I knew that I had somebody who is ill, the fact that we always help other people with their children, with trouble and so on, mm -hmm. I would not sit here and know, say, um, Ramon have like some problem. Hello? Miss Kalai? Listen to me, Miller here. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to try call you on the next line. Just wait till you see the phone. Hello? Hello? Yeah, I can hear you now. Hello? Yes. Sorry, I couldn't hear what you were saying. Yes, I was saying about the other um, allegations and so on. I didn't hear anything in any way, Carly. Anyway. Uh -huh. Well, I didn't know either. I had no clue. I actually just found out the other day. And that was shocking to me because I realized... Hello? Okay, you sound much better. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I didn't yes. hear what you were saying. Yes, I was saying that the the other allegations, no. Mm -hmm. I didn't hear anything, anything through any grapevine from any family member, any stranger, anything. No one said anything, and, that's why. And everything seemed normal. Mm -hmm. So I could not have done, addressed anything. But Miss Kalai, when you had the first opportunity to address it, you weren't, you didn't address it. And this, in, 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 in the timeline... We can see the team. Yeah. My team can see something. Yeah. I made an error, and you made an error. And the error was not dealing it and nipping it in the bud because it created a situation where, unknown to me, it never even crossed my mind that he could have done it to someone yeah. else. It's so strange it never crossed my mind, but that's how much I was dealing with my own trauma. Do you see what I mean? But basically, I'm not give. I can't give information now but he's been doing it for quite some time he's been doing it since he did it to me imagine that that's 14 years time span 14 years so because he got away with it then and he felt so comfortable and cocky he felt like this was going to become a lifestyle which it, which it basically is for him and when i put my documentary out because i know everyone's wondering how is that possible it can't be possible, but it is possible. And now it's no longer even about me. You get me? Because I had my own healing. Now it's more about the other so, people. So I'm just... So it dawned on you that that is what he was. That's why you reached out to other people. No, not at all. 
Not at all. Someone said something to me. I don't know if you know this. I'm going to tell you. I'm not giving information for my documentary, but I'm going to tell you this one thing. Two things I'm going to tell you. When I came back to England, after this had happened, a lady who ran a bar in Mandeville called me from Mandeville and tried to extort money from me. She was blackmailing me under the premise that if she, I didn't give her the money, she was going to tell everyone what Ramon had did to me. That's the first thing I'm going to tell you. Second thing, when Ramon did what he did, I had just started dating when someone. Did, hold on, when did this happen? 2008. Long time? 2008. No, I mean about some, the, the person with bar. The same 2008 is the lady she used to run this bar named Hilltop and Fear Data used to come at um, Chester. Mm-hmm. Used to work at the bar. That's coming to know no bar, Mandeville. That's the only reason why I could say this specific bar because was working in the bar, and that's actually how I even saw Ramon because I went to see. They was all connected to Chester. Do you see what I mean? So that lady, even though she has children herself, with her dirty, vile energy, tried to extort money from me as a woman in a bid to shame me about what had happened to me. And I had just started dating someone in Mandeville when this had happened. And the day after it happened, unknown to me, Ramona and his friends went and told that man that had had with me. And they, yeah. So my guy that I was dating called me and asked me, is there anything I need to tell him? Them lot are wicked. They're not normal. They're psychotic. And on top of this, remember... I remember the name. The guy that... What he looks like. The guy that Ramon did that, he went on to rape in the grill he's a he's another serial rapist a human and know him name the only person's name that i know is ramon and that's why ramon's gonna get the blow because the only reason i was in that situation is because of ramon i think he said something about some other person who he wasn't so familiar with but used to kind of come and hang around but i think it was another manchester boy there was two guys with him one i know his name his name is shem the other guy, I couldn't even... My mind keeps telling me he's a man named Chris. I don't even know if that's true or not. I never said the guy before. If I saw him today on the road, I wouldn't even know that's him and that's evil. And that's all on Ramon. I'm at the stage at any time... I'm not the same woman or child. I'm not that same person. I'm a different person. And that's why I've done this, Miss Kalai. Because you know that I love you, but this isn't about me and you. This is not about Linnea and Mrs. Kalai. This is about what did Ramon do and who enabled this and it has to come to an end. So he, so he has to decide what so, he's doing. But, so, <laughs> I don't know. So what? I don't know. He, he, listen, when I was speaking to um, Sabrina, Sabrina, yes. and, and you know what's so scary? This is what's so scary. After I emailed you, yeah. And I'm going to send you a screenshot so you can see it. After I emailed you, I, I went into Facebook and I messaged Sabrina. When I got into the message, you know, like Facebook doesn't delete any kind of message. It just keeps everything. Mm -hmm. I could see the last time that I had messaged Sabrina, you know. And the last time oh. that I messaged Sabrina was 2017. And I messaged Sabrina to tell her what Ramon did to me. But when I reached out to Sabrina, because this is how much, that's how you know it's been bonding me. 2017 is only five years ago. So nine years after this happened, this was still affecting me psychologically. Psychologically, I reached out to tell Sabrina what happened. I hadn't spoken to her since she had come to Leicester Square for the premiere of her film, mm -hmm. right? And even that, even the fact that I went and supported that, I went and supported that knowing that I am too good. I am too good for most people around me because they would never give me that kind of grace. When I go back into the inbox, I see where, look, 2017, I messaged Sabrina to tell her. And before I tell her, she tell me that she'd just have a baby. And I feel so bad. Oh. And I'm like, oh no. And I say to her, you know what, I'm really sorry. Oh, and she is. Mm hmm. Until it went. March, March, March 2017.
the 18th of March. And then, once I said it does have baby now, because obviously I genuinely love Sabrina, I decide, mm -hmm. you know what, it's not the appropriate time. Just leave it, just okay. leave it. And I say that to her. I tell her I have something very heavy to tell her. She said, is it about her? I say, no, but it relates to you, but it's not about you. Once she realized it's not directly about her, she said, okay, you know, I hope you can deal with it. So I have all of this, you know, as proof to show that I reached out to her. And then when I reach out to her this time, she tell me, sir, she speak to Ramon, and Ramon tell her, I say, me the consent. So I'm going to ask her, if I ask Ramon, what did it say? What come out of my mouth for give you consent? You like a dirty rapist. How dare he? You guys are lucky I'm not in Jamaica right now. That's the problem. Because anyhow I was in Jamaica, I would be in Mandeville. I would come to Mandeville and deal with this directly. This isn't going away anyway. So I don't understand but, how you can assist. Even though I'm glad you've reached out because it shows a lot of integrity on your side. Seriously, Miss, because it does. And it's touching. But it doesn't actually... It's not going to change what's happening, you know? It's not. <clears throat> and Ramon is my enemy. That's another thing. And Sabrina was... Yeah, Sabrina was shocked when I said that. Ramon is a rapist. He's a rapist. You're not listening. He has never what? He has never what? Ramon is a rapist. And that is why he's my enemy. I was just saying that he has never really... Like, in love why would he? Why would he? I'm one of his victims. Why on earth would he speak ill of me? I am one of his victims. Why would he speak ill of me? Don't you understand that rapists have a totally but different I'm just, psychology? I'm just wondering why he wanted to speak to you too. I'm just wondering. Because you know why? Because I told Sabrina that I'm going to put it online. And then she said, okay, she's going to go speak to him. I'm going to just take it online to the next day. And if I'm after the next day, come I said, you know what? You guys think, yeah, that I owe you something. You don't treat, yes, and, I mean, I think that not you is, specifically. I said to Sabrina, you guys don't treat me how I treat you. You don't give me the grace that I give you. You don't give me the love that I give you. I always kept on checking back up on Miss Calliope. I always did. Do you understand? I don't get that. But when you were at university and all, always saying hello to you and all of that and whatever. And, and No, that is true. To be honest, once I pulled away, that was it. I never came and said to and you I didn't know why I was pulling I away. Lost. I have a lot of students who are close to me. I can think a lot of them, and then because you teach thousands of children, mm -hmm. and then sometimes out of the blue, we say, "Oh my goodness!" It's because, and to show you how that was not in my head to say um, when I was doing the opening for the top hall, mm -hmm. I tried to reach out because there were students in there who made the um the theater arts really, you know, dynamic. And okay. because of my work there, they selected me. They gave me a first-class theater. And I wanted to celebrate. And so I picked some of my past students to go on video to talk about their journey there. And because I was so overwhelmed, I had just too much to do to present it. And I had your name. And then had I known, instead of invite you to come to our top hall, we probably would have busy and discussed this here with you. But because I'm glad you never reached out because I would have done a wrong thing to do that because I don't have a good experience at Top Hall because my last experience at Top Hall is telling you that so I don't want to ever go there again in my life. That's why, you know, when I moved to Jamaica, I don't even come to Manchester because of this. Because of this, I never had a dream to come back to Jamaica and live in Kingston ever in my life. I always wanted to come back to Mandeville, always. And I said, no way, I am not going to go and look up at my man's face. Because you see, if it's going to come to that, somebody is going to die. So you see, before it reached that level. Then, even then, if we didn't know if it's at that level to us, think it's at some level like that. Yeah, he I thought he got away with it. I'd have, I'd, have to, I'd have said to Ramon, uh -huh. I'd have said to him, don't come, Ramon. Because you never have to come. It's just that that trip was planned so hurriedly, and I just had to utilize people around me. So I brought uh -huh. him to do the technical things, kind of really actor. Uh -huh. And that's the, the other thing. I don't know anything about Ramon. You know that? I don't know anything about Ramon, you know. All I know is about Sabrina and Miss Kalai. I don't know. I don't even remember Ramon acting in a guy there. To me, Ramon was one of the little baby them. When we were doing Saturday class, he was in the little baby group. I'm so, I'm so disgusted because of that, because I don't know him. And I think that if I did know him, I might have known that he was seedy enough 
to be like that. But the truth is, I just went on a rapport of, oh, this is Ramon. This is like family. And he clearly doesn't see me as family, does he? Because he won't have sex with me. He don't see me as no family. So make him glare. Yeah. So I don't know how you guys are going to deal with it because... I just did an interview with my first platform, yeah? I mean, that can be put in. So sorry about this. Pardon? <laughs> what did you say, Ms. Kalai? Randai. No, I it's can't not hear you. That somebody capable. I'm saying this is not something to deal with. This is just something that so everybody is just going to crumble and die. Well, I could have crumbled. I crumbled and I almost died. And when I was in that space, I had to come through on my own. So it's really hard for me to have empathy for anyone at this stage. And that's the deepest thing because I've spent all this time having empathy for everybody else but Linnea. I'm going to be um, doing surgery soon. I'm so on some of my try my best to keep, you know, on a high, on a positive note and so so i think you if once you accept that ramon is a rapist and it's for the betterment of the planet that it comes out to protect the other victims and that you didn't do anything to cause it it wasn't your fault you didn't groom a rapist but something that he saw growing up at home probably his dad and however his dad was carrying on it affected his psyche i've done a lot of research on ramon you know even so down mm -hmm, rapist rape profiling now. I'm just saying now that, um, so you are think that he's a danger to society now? Ramon is a danger to society. Several women, you're not listening to me, and I realize it from the beginning. I realize that you're not listening. Let me tell you something, Miss Kalai. <laughs> Within 24 hours of putting up a poster on Facebook and Instagram, two women who I don't know from Adam, son of people, woman, no. People on my door know from nowhere. But when I asked him about it, he's a clueless. No, listen, no, listen, listen. Of course he's clueless. Yeah, he's a, of course he's clueless because he's a rapist. He's a psychotic. He's been hiding it. Why, why on earth would he admit it? He never did it before. Those two women are part of the group of women that we now have. So I know those two women come forward. My just wife and know that fair fact. It's just that him within the first 24 hours two women have come forward so my question is what's going to happen because this is this was about me this is how i know god is moving me when i came to you about it and when i spoke to sabrina about it it wasn't actually about anyone else i had no idea i want spirit said to me say you say before you come up with no documentary and post a documentary there just ask a little question so i asked it but i had no clue that someone would respond and it's been the most disgusting experience of my life listening to the accounts of what Ramon has done to other women in Mandeville and he's not getting away with it. The Me Too movement did not come to Jamaica and now it's about to. But there's this movement about women that have been violated but it hasn't reached yeah. Jamaica and Jamaica is so behind the rest of the world. It still is. And this, it, I would never want this to happen, Miss Kalai. Why would I want this to happen? Why would I want Ramon to be a serial rapist? This has blown me for six. I've even had to stop working for a bit of time to deal with this new information and to deal with these victims who haven't healed as much as me. I've done my healing. That's the reason why I can talk. Because you see, unless I've healed from something, I can never talk publicly about it. But you see, the day I heal from that thing, Miss sorry, if anybody would do me something, and that's what's happened with Ramon. And it just happened to hit me. Oh, my. And it's his fault. When he was going around raping no, your students, did he think about you? No, he took advantage of you. He took advantage of what? Of every resource you offered him. He knew what he was doing. He knew that you would have hated it, and he went ahead anyway. When you came to him that day, and you asked him about what I said, and he lied and he got away with it, that made him, yeah? Mummy, all right, my good. And them go after a rape of a bag of woman after that, yeah? A bag of woman, a mean of attack. And my, I have a whole daughter. And another thing I'm going to tell you, when I got assaulted by Ramon, because Ramon had gone and told everyone, I came out and said this lie to rape. So Mandeville already knew about this, you know. This isn't no secret. When this happened, one of my school friends came to visit me because he heard about what happened and he was very distressed for me. 
because he cared about me. And you know what he told me? He told me Sabrina was raped to Mandeville, you know? So when I emailed you the other day, I thought you knew that. And she told me, say, you never know. But she not deny it all, no. She has not denied it because it is true. Because this is how our culture is. We have to keep things to ourselves because we're shame like dog. But you see me? From the day I gave birth in public, in a hospital, in front of all these strangers, I must have lost that shame. Why should I be ashamed if someone is so vile and disgusting that they think they can? Why am I ashamed? That is the Jamaican conditioning why women cannot speak up for their rights. I am not ashamed of nothing. I'm a beautiful woman. I've got a beautiful mind, body, heart, and soul. If a little ingrate, a little blighted person on this planet sees me and wants to violate me that's his shame his mother's shame and his father's shame it's got nothing to do with me and that's my healing miss Kalai, because i was so shame about it i was so shame i was so shame that you even dealt with me like that i started thinking well miss Kalai must think that i'm a prostitute then because oh she for feel like no, me better do something like I that explain that part already i explained that no part. i know but at the time roman a bit and rot roman said to it never sound like say you. What, did, what, what is your understanding of what happened? Can I just ask you? What's mm -hmm. your just for reference? What is you your see, understanding of what me, happened? Because you see, because we're talking and this something no one. I'm not good at these things and people. I mean, it's like I would prefer Ramon to say from his mom. No, I want to, to like know talking. from you. No, 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 Miss Kalai, I don't care anything that Ramon has to say. Just so, just so you know, I. Don't no, care. Me, what I want to know is, yes, what did you think happened? Yes, I don't know if you do, and I don't know if you do, and I don't even know how to handle it, and me a shake now and so on, and the place I get dark. Uh -huh. me, no, me, no, um, me no know if it's good for me or for you to even discuss that part. I'm scared. No, but you can't do because... that. You can't say that you don't want to discuss that part, because guess what? Your son raped me. I came and spoke to you about it. And you ignored me, essentially. You can't omit parts that make you uncomfortable. Your son did that to me. No, and the reason why I'm asking... Went, no, the reason I'm saying this is because I do not know how far you're going or what you're doing with it. But we just come to your normal, like, whatever. But you can't come to me normal in a situation like this. There's nothing no, no, normal about I'm it. I'm saying, I'm saying motive or not and I go say you did say or whatever no I just want to understand because like, what you I just want to understand so, simply because no Miss Kalai honestly you know why I want to understand you said something earlier that's yes. kind of like shook me a bit like you said yes that um based on whatever you understood it was like me and Ramon had kind of you know got carried away kind of thing and I was shocked that you said that because that's yes. making me think, oh, is that your one? So that's your understanding of what happened then. So you've already said that. So it's not like I'm asking you to say anything new. I'm just asking you to clarify what your understanding was. Now, you see, if that was your understanding, let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. Nothing could be further from the truth. Even that particular scenario, that's not what the issue was. That's not what happened. And nothing could be further from the truth. So I think, I don't know, I know Ramon's going to, I already checked, Ramon's going to stay in denial forever because he knows what the opposite of denial is, going to prison. I don't care about his denial. I don't care what he thinks. I don't care what happens to him. This is bigger than Ramon. He's simply here for the cause, for me to show the problems that's happening in Jamaica. It's bigger than Ramon. It's about you. It's about all the people involved in the situation and how they handled it. And why? So even this, I'm putting in the documentary, the fact that I came to you, this is how you responded, and this is what happened, because that's the truth. Because then I have to explain that you and I, even if we weren't conscious of it, we became enablers for a predator. Also, don't you know that Ramon was going out with schoolers when he was a big man? Because everybody else knows that. So he's known, even without rape, he's already committed statutory rape, and Mandeville knows that. Right yeah. So no. Um, I want to know if <clears throat> if anyway, he just come like some long night in here. It has been. I tell you that for free. It's, it has been a night. It was a nightmare that happened to me. That was the worst night of my life. And even the ongoing stuff is still disgusting and 
yeah, rape is just the gift that give, keeps on giving, innit? It doesn't, that's what it is. It doesn't stop there. It was, it's the worst thing. I had to tell before I came out online, I had to contact yeah. that I'm so going to come out no, and say it. There is something that somebody can get help for. This is um, like social media, the play God now. And then, Nobody don't um, need no help. He needs, what, what do you mean help? We've got victims. We're going to link them with um, psychologists and, and counsellors. This isn't about help. This is about the fact that this is a crime, you know. This is a crime. It's not about help. I don't need any help. I'm actually really blessed right now. I don't need no help with nothing. I know. A man couldn't even give me money. I'm going to take it from him for say, you know what? I'm going to give you this money. Be quiet. I wouldn't even take it. Miss Kalai, I saw when you wished me Happy New Year, you know. I saw it. Yeah, on January 1st, I saw you came. You commented on a post and Happy New Year. I just felt so sad. I wanted to say something like, yeah, Happy New Year to your rapist son. But I thought if I say that, it's going to just be too much. Don't say that to her. Just leave it. And I felt away. Do you know what I mean? Like, I know you for you. And I know you're saying it from the sweetest place. But I also know that. This is what my experience has been. But you know what? I'm going to give you so much credit for something. I feel like, me feel like uh, me want to jump out of my skin and I can't jump out. No, don't. I'm going to give you so much credit. I hope this will help. I want to give you credit for something. You see, no matter what happened before, it's done, gone, gone already. And I think it was destiny. It was supposed to happen that way. But, Miss Kalai, you see the fact that you emailed me and you're calling me now it's like um, even if you're not in agreement with me not that but some people need to be able to do this to have that level of like it just shows that you care so I respect you for that a lot like regardless of whatever's happened it says a lot about who you are a lot because when I said that about my brother they didn't do that and another thing Ramon has been trying to do a lot of things to me online and I don't appreciate it and that's, every time he does something to me, I start getting mad. He starts contacting my followers, telling them all this stuff. Yeah, he's been trying to hack into my Instagram, hack into my different accounts. And I've been having to change passwords. And I'm like, why don't you just come out and say, I lie, she I tell. Why don't you just come out and say something? But you're, you're at the background. He messaged a few of my friends, not knowing they were my friends, you know. Not knowing they were actually my friends. They just sent me the screenshot of what he's doing. I just think it's pathetic and immature. I'm a, I'm a big woman. I don't have time for trolls. I said what I said. If anyone don't like it, I also said we can all get a lawyer. I'm happy to go to court because if we go to court, he's going to get lock up. Any over go court him, I'll get lock up. Any hole, we go court, he's getting lock up. In Jamaican prison. And yeah... So I'm just wondering, like, if that has to be, if somebody can learn from whatever, at what some But when point, did he learn? Because when did he ever... Miss Kalai, Miss Kalai... Don't mm -mm. you think that the social media is enough? Miss <coughs> Kalai, the day that someone rapes you, you decide what's enough. I'm so sorry if that's disrespectful. Yeah. But the day that you have it's that experience, you can speak to what someone else does in response to their own experience. This is not performing arts. This is not the show must go no, on. Man. No. This is not the show must go on, you know. Because that mentality causes a lot of this problem. The show must go on. This is not the show. This is the opposite of the show must go on. What do you think? No, do you no, think no, that I would no, post this? Yeah. No, no, no. You, I'm not lighting anything out far from it. I'm just thinking about... Do you um, think that, that Ramon Kalai being out yes. on a, as a rapist on a couple very small social media pages is payment? Also, here's another thing. If Ramon Kalai had in any way grown, he would have done something to make some type of atonement. When people think they've done something wrong, they try to make atonement. I never hear about from Ramon yet, you know. I remember, I go and like say I lie, me I tell some minutes in no atonement, minutes in no um, regret. Where's his regret? So, so that is nothing. That, that media page is just to introduce this campaign. That, me, that what I'm doing online yeah, is nothing. Like, well, me never really, um, I was just thinking about... Um, 
What do you want me to do? Take to down the page? I really do nothing. We just start to think that sometimes when things like that happen to people are something they do. Where their family just mash up and crash and... Like of course it's something that I did and let me tell you what the thing is. No, not you, Lenny. No, but I do agree not and I'm going to tell... No, you myself. know what it is? Like it I'm is something... No, you never do nothing. And, um, you never do nothing. Um, mm -mm. You know what it is? You're Jamaican and our culture and is sick. And as a result, to be like, you know, Miss Kalai's got nothing to do with you individually. No, it's not that. It's just misery now. But I think you need to have more empathy for the victims because it will help you not to focus so I much on yourself. No, but you don't. Because, listen, it, you can't. Because you're asking me if a social media is enough. And I'm like, wait, on which planet, if a man is raping woman, putting them on social media is enough? So that means your empathy is just because I'm not opening up and saying, look, Miss no, Kalai, no, no, this is what I've been through since that happened. It's not punishment, it's public awareness. And that's the other thing. He hasn't had one policeman come to him. Where has he, he's free to go to work. He's free to rape anybody else who he wants to rape. He's free to have sex. He's free to drink. He's free to smoke. What kind of punishment is that? What kind of punishment is that? That's not a punishment. What about the girls who are suicidal because of what Ramon did to them? What about that? Don't you think that that weighs, has more weight to it? The girls who were shamed and who can hear everyone chatting about it now in Mandeville. I know they are them. The woolly pa them too. Woolly pa them. What about them? They are the only people I think, yeah, take center stage here. Not even me. He is lucky because it's the most high hand is on my head. I never dreamt in a million years, Miss Kalai, that this would happen. If you asked me three weeks ago that this was going to happen, if you told me, I would have run, I would have run away and screamed and said, no, please, God, no, no. And you know the proof of that? The proof of that is the fact that I've had all this time and I've never said a word. I've got a very public platform. I've had more than enough opportunity to talk. I do a lot of women wellness trauma recovery work. I'm known for that. And I have never yes. uttered a word. That's to show who I am. But guess what? God is bigger than man. And God did know, even though me never know, say it wasn't just me. God knew. Clearly. Clearly. God knew. So when I connect the dots, I realize this, this is disgusting. It's not even just about me. Oh, my God. It's just really not about me anymore. This is really a, a, real, a true life crime that I'm uncovering in real time on the social media. And as I'm posting, more people are contacting me about their experiences. Don't you think that sounds like a movie? That's not real. Even for me now, this has been so surreal. I feel like I'm in a movie. It's not real. So whose fault is this? Is this your fault? Is it my fault? Is it Sabrina's fault? No, this is from man's fault. Anybody who wants to set them kind of bed up feet for themselves, when them want to lie down in it, them can't draw down other people in it. But you can't keep defending Ramon. That's another no, thing. I'm not no, 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 Lenny. I'm not defending anything. I'm not defending anything. Yeah, you can't defend him. You can't defend him. He's not innocent. He's a man. No one knows what men do behind closed doors. And when men want to go to their lowest vibration, it is disgusting. And every man on this planet is capable of doing that. Every man. Not just Ramon. Every man is capable of going to the lowest base of their spectrum. And that's what he's done. I also think that he's got a psychological issue because I know he's psychotic. It's not just that he's a rapist because the way how he's doing it, I know Ramon is sleeping very, very good at night. It's not bothering him. That means he's a psycho. He is a psycho, not just a rapist. And he's a narcissist. He's a narcissistic, psychopathic rapist. And that is the, the profile that we've done on him, Miss Kalai, as a psychological profile to see what kind of rapist that we're dealing with. Uh -huh. The fact that he thought he can come to England and look in my face after that happened. Yeah, is everything. That shows how narcissistic he is. He never looked sorry. He never would draw me aside and say, Linnea. He never said nothing. 
Yes, I'm so sorry. Like in my head, in my head. Uh huh. Like I told you, that's what I like. What you call it? Like the conclusion I drew uh-huh. because everything. Coming so, I mean, also sometimes, <laughs> um, persons like something traumatic happened to them and they don't know how to talk about it and all of that. I'm aware of all of that. I've never been but a because, um, raped in my life, apart from when mis- when, when Ramon did it. I've never been assaulted. When um. When um like we've been communicating over the years and you mm-hmm. come to look for me and we talk and so on. In my head, I just assume that um maybe um you know like when you look back at something mm-hmm. and you because of what he said and what you said is like I had to draw a conclusion and that is why I said maybe. I should have asked a third party, like when uh-huh. you tell me, like to whatever, because I thought you came to me because came to me to tell me about what happened to you and so on, and instead of going straight to like to the police. Uh-huh. So in my head, I assumed that I should like seek help for him, get the truth out completely, everybody talk about it and so on. And then follow up with your pain. Uh-huh. But um, I I did not know where to go apart from I asked you and I asked him. And then I drew a conclusion which maybe I should have revisited with you. Uh-huh. But I just assumed because nothing pointed to the fact that and then we just assume based on your forthright personality and so on. But something must point to the fact that because I told you, that's all all I did. I don't think other than that, I don't think I had anything else that I had to do. I told you, I think that took a lot of courage. It did for me to even say. And I think once I realized you didn't take me seriously, I was just dealing with the abandonment issues that I had, basically. I take you seriously. But like you have a child and then you have somebody else that you love Mm -hmm. and you listen to that person and then you listen to the next person. And because I wasn't there now and based on what transpired afterwards, I drew a conclusion which probably... What do you mean what transpired afterwards? I mean, like, like days after when I see you, you come to look for me and we're talking and sometimes you voluntarily come and so on. Mm-hmm. And then we think that you had something like traumatic because we just think that so you... So you thought I must have been me. lying at the time then? No, not lying, man. Like, um, you know, like sometimes um, something happened. Like you could have probably have more than one scenario. And sometimes in retrospect, when you look back at it, it's not as extreme as you said. Wow, that I'm was so the upset to hear that. that. I'm out. really upset to hear that. Was the, that was the conclusion. Wow, that's that upsetting, man. Because me never think, say, me never think, say, you'd have come call like somebody elim- eliminate that completely. That mm-hmm. wasn't a part of what I thought. You never think, say, you're lying none at all. That was not in my head. Because you never mad. That was not in my head. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. No, so it, um, no. like all the meeting up and so on, which when I don't know, blame shifted me at door, so me just like kind of that's why I, I came to that conversation. But didn't you notice though, Miss Kalai? Revisit it. Didn't you notice that after that time, I net I never like you came to basically, I took you back and you came to England but I myself never came to see you again didn't you notice that I never came back to see you after after I took other guy day for whatever was happening there mm-hmm. I personally have never come back to Manchester High School I've never come to see you again but then I didn't know whether you were abroad or whether you were here. No, I came enough times. And that was a shock to me. I wouldn't have known that. But no, I didn't think I you was, knew. Okay, fair was, enough. When, yeah. I was trying to, when I was trying to get you, I got somebody in charge and I kept saying to him, say, Lenya, you need to get Lenya. You need to get Lenya because I need her on the thing that we're going to do. Mm-hmm. And then I saw your mommy. 
and she said to me, say, if I knew that you were in Jamaica, and I said, no, I didn't know. And then I said, oh, she probably very busy working on some project. I wonder if she didn't know if I email me, do it by her, because me lose my phone, so I mean, if I WhatsApp or email. Uh -huh. I said, look like so she don't see the email then, because we really want her to do a video clip for me, for something that we're doing in the hall, for the dynamic students that we had during that era to talk about their life. So if me didn't, if, you know, and when was that? I think if that was, oh Lord, that was, uh, it was a little before I retired, that was about when we retired, I'm so 20, I'm so 2017. For 2017. Right, 2018. Yeah, I moved in 2018. That's when I moved to Jamaica. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Well, maybe a little after my retired, and we don't know, but it's quite a little before, a little after. And then I asked her, and she said she will call you. She's lying. She, she was lying she to said, you. She, she was said, lying. She said she'll tell you. She's well, lying to because, you because, because me and I don't talk, and she knows that, but she doesn't want to admit it to you. I mean, I know that. And she wouldn't even admit that. it. That's why she do. Everybody will ask how's Linnea. She that. tell them I one big lie about how is Linnea. She don't know how I am. <laughs> she said Linnea is here. Here now. Oh, said, oh my gosh, nice. Because I said, look at me now. Me I try to um get her to do a video or something because I think you're abroad. So if you're available, then maybe you'll come. And then she said, so let me just leave it at that because the project was so overwhelming that I got another past student. I gave him the list of names, five persons' name. I think I put on it. Mm -hmm. And um, to, for him to do that, and I think he said that he wasn't getting through to you or... Maybe about seven, no, maybe about seven persons, and you were one of the persons that he never I got. I never saw it. So, I mean, I know. I never ever and, got that. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, I never saw that email. So, then, no, when she said that she will tell you, we just had to leave it at that because we couldn't manage anything anymore. Uh -huh. And then, I mean, I hear nothing. Even after that, I kept saying to them, say, it's just such a pity because I wanted people from different across different Times. areas of discipline mm -hmm. to show them about the power of the performing arts, um, etc, etc. And the fact that you're an artist would have been good and you'd have delivered yourself well. And I kept saying, boy, boy, boy. They must say, who is this Lenny? I am say, one of my past students, and I really wanted her to be on it. So we wouldn't be there digging or so on if men and things say nothing, whatever. So when I got the email now, that email recently, uh -huh. Me, um, I never black out, but the place went dark and I had to self-medicate. That's why me answer is so late in the night because... Um, what do you mean self-medicate? Like, go take my tablet. Like, go take my um, blood pressure tablet quick and try to put something on my head and, oh my and God. calm down and calm down. And, because I just the place just went black and I had to hold and start, cold sweat start to wash me. And I just had to go... But I didn't want to say it because me never want to sound like say me uh, reach out for pity or something. No, else. I, I think Sabrina me. told me, but she never night. told me that. But she told me something like <laughs> you were looking the very whole great. Night, me I try to type, I'm in a no office type because me I say, what if me type something and me type something wrong? What if me type something and me sound like say me colors? What if me type something and it look like say me not care? Me no know what to type. Me no know what to write. Me no know what to say. Uh -huh. Because me I say, Lord, have mercy all of these years. And then when me say all of these years now, it will come like say, me insensitive and me never think say, that should affect you or something. Uh -huh. I didn't know what to say and what to do. And me just feel say, this is it for me, for the end of my life. Now me dead. Uh -uh. Not at all. Not at all. There's life after rape, even for the people who weren't raped. That's the that's the saddest thing, but it's true. Not it's not you didn't do it. Okay, you whatever happened happened, but you didn't do it. If that happened to you, and Ramon knows that you almost blacked out and stuff, and he hasn't spoken up, it makes me really worried about who he no, is. No, he he want he he wanted to speak to you. No, but has he told you that what I'm saying is true? If well. No, he, he, he never, he never say true or whatever. He said he would want to speak to you. Listen to this, Miss Kalai. Let me tell you something. Ramon put something. I okay. Basically, 
I was leaving the event with Ramon and I fell asleep in the car. It was about 4 a.m. maybe. Yeah, it was night time. Yeah? Mm. And you see when I woke up? It was the next day. It was daylight. And Ramon was with me. And the two men them that he was at the party with was sitting at the end of the bed watching. Ramon and him dotty nasty friend them. We now got to talk about everything. And I'm not giving a public testimony when I do my video. But Ramon Kalai is a rapist. And I'm glad he chose me as hard as it was. Because I was the wrong person to do it. And you know that Miss Kalai is one thing you know about me. That's why you probably think, say, you know, say, maybe she did change her mind for true. Because if I one thing you know about me, I'm very sorry. But I was so damaged. I was so traumatized. I was so hurt. I didn't have that strength for anything else but to cope. For years, just coping. No, 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 not change your mind, you know, not change your mind. Not but see it differently, you know? No, I never see saw it differently. Because I thought that, like... I never you, saw it differently. Mm -hmm. And also, to like today... Some, you call it some miss, some... Mm -mm. They were so wicked to me after. They were so oh, rude yeah, to that, me. That's not the, when I started to cuss and say, Roman, what you do? Shem, what have you guys been doing? They spoke to me like I was a prostitute. They spoke to me like a dog. He's a damn liar. And don't make me cuss bad word too. He's a liar, dear. Because you see, after when I came to consciousness, the way how they spoke to me was like I was a piece of shit, Miss Kalai. And they spoke to me like that till they dropped me home. And, and Raman never looked me in my eye the whole time. And that dotty boy, Shem, you, the only energy you should have, Miss Kalai, is to give thanks to the Most High God that Ramon is alive. That's it. That is it. Just give thanks. Give thanks. Because you would never know that over these years, the amount of time people think, well, for killing your own ass son enough, you would never know that. That's all you need to, as, to show as proof of God's mercies in life. Give thanks that Ramon is alive. This that I'm doing is nothing. It's nothing in, in the long scheme of things. Ramon has been living his life. He's been damaging people. Imagine I wasn't even a young sing. I wasn't even a teenager. I was a mother. How dare he? How dare he do that? I was a mother. He's lucky. You understand what I'm saying? I'm not backing down. I'm not taking nothing down online. And there's worse to come. And I have to pray for your strength and your fortitude because you can't make Ramon take you out. If he knows what he's done, which I'm sure he does, I'm sure he doesn't have a mental health problem, he's not having blackouts, he needs to have the humility of self to be honest. But what he's not going to do is walk on this planet with me and my daughter and not be known that he's a rapist. He's not going to do that again, ever. Not even the embassy, not even the United States embassy aren't going to know Miss Kalai. I'm a global citizen. I'm not Jamaican. You see, if I was Jamaican, I would have never talked up about this. That's the one thing that's made me talk up. I am British. And this is part of my Jamaican culture. And I want to heal it. And I can't heal it if I don't talk about it. In Mandeville, you know the amount of women. Now I know three girls from Ayayde that's been raped. Not one. Not two. And that's the only ones who've told me about it. Not just by Ramon, you know, just in general. People being raped all the time. But, but because our mothers put up with it and never said nothing, we must put up with it and don't say nothing. This is 2022. So I think this is my purpose. The whole thing, coming into performing arts, having the journey I had with you and all my other arts teachers, of which there are many, I feel I've always been best friends with every single one of my performing arts teachers. Everywhere I go, you see the same way how you were like, oh, Linnea, Linnea, Linnea. If I go to my like drama college in, in England, all the students are like, oh my God, are you Linnea? The way how they speak about you. So I know I, my teachers are always like, my mom used to cuss me when I was younger. You love put the teacher them on too much pedestal. You understand? Like they are my, and I needed them. I need, we all needed each other for the journey, but I genuinely feel in my heart. You see, because this never happened when I lived in Jamaica, but when I came back, it's the culture, you know what I mean? It's like, just because I was there, that happened to me. That's how I feel, basically, yeah. So I, I'm, I have to speak up about it. I work with women, you know. This is, I never knew God was going to bring me here, but this is what I do now. Mm-hmm. And Ramon's just lucky. I've been in Jamaica, what, four years now? I could have come Mandeville any day.
I could have done this a long time ago. And I wasn't even thinking about him. But let me tell you why I did this. Because I know you was wondering where it come from. So you know I said I was dating someone when this happened? We've always continued to be friends. For 14 years, me and the guy. So we're not having a relationship from a long time. But we've always had a rapport. We've always kept our friendship. Now recently, he's been showing an interest in me. And I'm not really interested. I don't think I want to ever date a Jamaican man again. I'm good, you know? But I'm talking to him. I'm hearing what he's saying. We're having some memory lane chat and stuff. And I said to me, say, well, you know, say, so one thing you do, I'm, I'm still kind of have you up for. I'm coming as here. Wait a minute. I'm coming and see you. Okay, all right, baby. Okay, all right, come. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's okay. He said, oh, it's one thing that him, him still have me up for. And I said, what is it? Now, when he said that, I immediately knew what he was talking about. Because throughout the 14 years, we've always talked about this happening, you know. Like, me and him. We've always had different conversations about it. And when he said that, I knew he was talking about that issue. And I said to him, go on then, what is it? And him, I said, no, him can't say it. no. Him, I forgot to tell me in person. And me start get kind of vexed. And I said, no, just say it. I know what it's about. Just say it. You know, I'm sick of this. Just say it. And then he said, yeah, I'm never really like the fact. So you met Ramon. Come tell me. Where him did tell me. You should have called me straight away and tell me where I'm did do. You see when he said that to me, I must have forgotten that this had happened. That's how much healing I've done, Miss Kalai. That's God has given me some peace where there was no peace. So I clearly had forgotten. And when he said that, I checked myself like Rockstone. Oh, you forget that. Give thanks, and I was so happy. But then I realized that what he said was highly inappropriate. How can you say that to me? What are you trying to, how can you tell people how to respond to their own trauma? It's just crazy to me. So when he said that, I said, you know what? I'm glad you brought that up. I'm glad you brought that up. I'm going to start documenting some stuff. I'm going to put a documentary out. And after I put down all my narrative and my whole story, I contacted you. Yeah, this is what happened. I can't, because who are these people that feel like any dear God sent them can come talk to me about it like I know you are what the you understand from the lady who tried to extort me. One time I was in um England. I, get, I had a call from a woman who was cussing me to leave her man alone. I never even know who this was. And she was like, You think I don't know what happened to you? And you know who it was? This same guy that I'm dating, he ended up, you know, having a family going into a relationship, yeah. Oh. That was his woman. But me and him wasn't in nothing. Do you understand? Like, we were just friends. Mm. And I thought, wow, everyone is so quick to want to draw up my violation, my trauma, and tell it back to me like I'm nobody. This is going to be the last time. You see, you see if anyone's going to talk this story, it's going to be me. Mm -hmm. And that's why I've done this. Because actually, God gave me time to, to heal and to have peace in my head. And I'm not coming from a space of anger that people think I am. I'm not. Because basically, that's how those campaigns need to be run. I am very at peace in my life, Miss Kalari. Very. Okay. I am. And if part of my destiny is to out rapist as the mother of a beautiful young woman, I humbly accept. I'm not here for it. He chose the wrong person. All the other ladies that he's assaulted, they would never have spoken up in their life. But me now, I'm the person that's spoken up. And now I find out that he's a serial rapist. It's like, it's like a play. You know, it's like a worse kind of play, like a Russian play or something. It's not, I would never have wanted this. I, would, I don't want to be involved. That's how I feel. I'm not ashamed. It's his crime. It's not mine. And I'm not going to allow people to judge me in that way. Let's Seriously. See Let's see I'm sorry, Lenny. It's just um, a baby here um, pulling at me. That's okay. Sabrina did say to me that I'm not to say anything about Ramon because he has a child and he's got to take care of him. 
And I was highly offended because I was aware that when I had this experience, I had a child, I was a single mother, and I had to pay my mom to look after my child. I had to pay for Belair. I had to pay for Ayayde, me one on my own. And Ramon, Simi, and still feel like same can come take violation. So why should I care? I'm sure the child won't suffer. Everybody has family, but I'm not here to care about a child when no one never cared about when this happened. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. And that doesn't mean I don't care about your grandchild, because I do. Everybody but, always loved it. Of course, I care, but Ramon, he, he make people don't love him, and it just, it's not a good thing. I've known this, I was about 10 years old that this happened, you know? read my journal so I'm not gonna make apologies Ramon even terrorized my own find out that that had happened to her mom what kind of filth is that why should us the women have to hold that no I'm not all it mm -hmm. so I don't know what you and him are gonna do Miss Kalai honestly I don't know yeah we can't do nothing we can't do nothing can't do a thing so you should yeah, make a statement right. that I came to you and I said that you're going to have to be honest because when I say it, I don't want to hear that it's not true because I'm going to say well go and ask Miss Kalai if it's not true because basically everybody is going to be quick to try and who, who, already people from Mandeville they think they can tear me down because I belong to that small minded town I love Mandeville but the, another reason why I didn't come back to Mandeville is too small minded for me and I don't subscribe to Mandeville society. I don't conform to it. So I don't care what people in Mandeville think. I don't care. The platform that he's come on, I went on an interview yesterday with a UK woman activist who is known for putting out rapists. And I went and spoke about Ramon. It's not just about Jamaica. Because everywhere we go, wherever Caribbean people go, this thing in their culture goes with them. So even outside of Jamaica, wherever Jamaican people are, enough women I get raped off all the time. Mm hmm So, yeah. So, yeah, I'm just sorry. Uh, everything just a sad. Become the global, what you call it? The model, the global model of the emblem of that. Yeah, I mean, he's not, if I, if I was a celebrity, that's when he, we could say, it's just, I'm not a celebrity, do you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I've got a limited audience. It's, it's not like I don't, you know, it's not like everyone in the world is seeing this. They're not. It's just a certain amount of people. But the thing is, Miss Kalai, don't you think I was shocked when the first person came forward and gave a rape account? Yeah, I was wondering what that was about because remember, no, you know, I would not have known anything like that to say that I'm condoning something like that. We wouldn't, whatever. No, I know you didn't know about those think. ladies, but my brain, my brain wouldn't go that way. No, I like know you never know because they never told me that they told you that. But the other thing is, that's when I realized that it was a blessing that I had told you. You see that little thing that I told you? You see, if I never told you. Now you would be even more confused as to what on earth is the name you're talking about. But you see, because I told you, that was such a blessing. Mm-hmm. Because you didn't, those girls, they're not close to you like how I'm close to you. So they didn't have that kind of rapport to say, let me tell her. You know? So it's just, it's, it's just predatorial behavior. I've got a lot of people that are in my family, other people, um, they're rapists. It's, it's just something that I've come to accept because it's always been there, but we're just so busy hiding it, you know what I mean? But now we have to make the world safer for, for women and children. You know? Yeah, man. So I'm really sorry. And I don't want you to let it affect your health. Like, just pray on it. And I know God will support you through it. Just pray on it, Miss Kalai, because... It's bigger than all of us. This this that's happened. How do you feel about that? Mm. Well, um, I just feel like my dream. So, oh so god, maybe in a couple of days I will process it. Yeah, so.
Yeah. Just know that when I came to you, I would never come and lie to you about your own son. And ne- nothing that I said wasn't true. Nothing that I said wasn't true. It was all true. And the reason why I was able to fall back in line is because that's something that my mom taught me to do because that's how she is with my brother. So even though my character is to be rebellious in that area, it was so wounding. And I realized, oh, this isn't Miss Kalai. This isn't my mother. This is Jamaican women. This isn't actually about the individual. This is about the culture, you know. It just turns up in everyone the way it wants to turn up. So I just hope that... I know you're going to feel better. I'm going to pray for you as well. Yeah, I am. I never knew that this would happen with us, but it's just a nightmare, Miss Kalai. It's just, mm, it's just a nightmare. It's just that it's becoming a shared nightmare, but from the beginning, it's just been a nightmare. <coughs> you know what happened with Mr. Daja Vader? <coughs> you know what happened with Mr. Daja Vader? Peter Daja Vader. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was a pedophile. Oh. When he died, all of the boys in the little boys' homes that he used to have choirs in came out and said that he was molesting them. Oh, Lord. He also gave a lot of boys AIDS because he died of AIDS. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and me, remember? So when he came to, to Ayaide, I cussed him off. Oh. And I remember, yeah, we sang some song from Lion King in the jungle. Mm-hmm. And when we were singing, him screw up him face every which kind of way. And I felt so defensive for everyone. It was so strange. I never had that experience before. And at the end of it, I cut him off and I got in so much trouble because you were so shame. I couldn't believe that. <laughs> One of your student them cuts off the guests where you invite Miss Kalai. Oh. You remember now, though? No, I don't remember. You don't remember? No. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, this happened. She don't know on the phone. What's some attention? Anyway, and then years later, I found out that he was a pedophile. And I realized that's why I had cussed him off. My spirit never take it. You understand? That's why. Because that guy was molesting Lots of children, and, and maybe there was an energy with him that just never sat right with me. Mm-hmm. So I, even though I'm good at the arts, I find that I'm something to do with rape. The amount of people, the amount of women everywhere I live in the world that come and tell me they've been raped, it's just blown my head off. Even before this had ever happened, I had met so many black girls that had been raped. I just didn't know what to do with it. But now I understand it's just part of our culture. That's why I'm trying to address the culture, not just Ramon. The culture of why these things can happen. And someone could say they were raped and people just act like they didn't say that. You know, it's just the culture. Yeah. So. Anyway, what surgery are you having, Miss Kalai? You sound exhausted mentally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It will pass, though. It will pass. As, as bad as you might feel, Miss Kalai, it will pass. You'll come back strong. It's not your fault. Just, yeah. You know? And, and this conversation goes very far, actually. That's how I feel. Because I don't have to say you're a rapist defender anymore. Even though you're not necessarily saying, yes, you agree, but I can just take you out of it. Even Diana, I stopped talking to Diane. So ignorant. Diane saw the post that I put up about Ramon, and she unliked my page. Like, she, she, she removed herself from my page. But she was still on my Facebook. So I reached out to her and I asked her, if this is the reason why you have unfollowed me, why don't you just unfriend me and done? 
And I said that if she cares so much about Roman, she should be giving thanks and praises in a very explicit way, explicit way, that he's still here. But the thing that I found really strange about that situation, and I'm glad she did that, because I'm making an, another documentary about the rape culture in Jamaica. I've known Diane since I was eight years old. Diane sees me posting stuff and she don't even come as a big woman who's older than me to ask me, what are you posting about? Mm-hmm. So when she um, did that, I was glad because I could use her as an example of how dunce people are in Jamaica because that is dunce. You cannot make a judgment if you haven't spoken to both sides. But she's run to the, the, the side that's accused and just run off. I'm not here for that. Diana is not a mother, so she can behave like that. I, however, have a child that's going to be this year. I can't afford to act like I'm a schoolgirl. I'm not. I can't afford that anymore. You know, it's different when you don't have children. It's totally different. But at least for my descendants that... No, I'm not, I'm not accepting this sort of thing anymore. So who, whichever um, people that fall on the wayside, I'm thankful for it because it's just God showing me who is who, <laughs> basically. So it, there's no loss. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anyway, thank you so much for calling. It's just that my ears, my arm, um, my arm. Um, Plugging the sock, the sock. No, it's okay. No, it's okay. Sorry, it was just me and the baby, so it just, it's just the second. So I'm a husband, I'm not saying who I talk to. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's the last thing I said. I had it at my ears the whole time. Okay. So you can, you can one of the back and say, just to tell you that. Okay. Oh, you did have heard this sound all along if it was on speaker. He's just listening to um some cartoon beside me. Because okay. I had to come in and make you watch this, something to that. But in order to get some peace to talk to you, mm-hmm. I gave him the tablet. Oh, that's that nice. Yeah. I won't get some dis- that's distraction in there. <laughs> right. And he's trying to just, just obsess with me. Mm. That's sweet. All right, then. All right, then. Well, have a good evening. Mm-hmm. We'll try to have a good evening. Well, as good as possible. All right. All right. And I'll take care. Yes. All right. All right, then. Bye-bye. 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 Yeah, man. Bye. Thank you very much for listening. I thought the last episode had broken the length record and yet here we are again. Please leave your comments below, like and subscribe if you haven't already and be sure to hit the notifications bell. If you have experienced any form of assault by Ramon Kalai, please contact me via Exposing Ramon Kalai on Instagram or email ramonkalaiabuse at gmail.com. I am open to having a confidential conversation with you. Many thanks, Belly Fam. May the healing continue. And as the old timers would say, walk good.